Select the correct statement. Statement 1. In solids, if we apply shear stress, deformation occurs but does not increase with time. And statement 2 is, in liquid, on application of shear stress, deformation increases with time. So we have to say if one statement is correct, two is correct, or both of them are correct. All right. So what happens in case of solids? If there is a shear stress, then obviously deformation will happen. But restoring forces develop inside the material. And then the material reaches an equilibrium. So in that case, the deformation does not increase with time, it becomes constant. Okay, so statement one is certainly correct. Now what happens in case of fluids is that at rest, a fluid cannot sustain shear stress. So if it cannot sustain shear stress and a shear force is being applied, then the surface of the liquid will start flowing. And once it starts flowing, then the deformation is going to increase with time. It cannot remain constant. All right, so option Two, or I should say statement 2 is also going to be correct. So my correct option in this case is going to be option C. Both statements 1 and 2 are correct. So the question is, two substances of relative densities rho 1 and rho 2 are mixed in equal volumes. And the relative density of the mixture is 4. When they are mixed in equal masses, the relative density of the mixture is 3, the value of rho 1 and rho 2 are. Okay, so then we have two mixtures, two liquids, and first they are mixed in equal volume, and the relative density of the mixture comes out to be 4. Okay, what does it mean? That let's say the volumes of the two liquids were V, then the density of the mixture will be given by the total mass, which is going to be rho 1 into V, plus rho 2 into v divided by the total volume will now become 2v. So v gets cancelled and what do we have? We have rho 1 plus rho 2 divided by 2. And this has been given equal to 4, which means we have a relationship between rho 1 and rho 2, which is rho 1 plus rho 2 is equal to 8. And let's just keep a note of it. All right. What is the next situation? In the next situation, they are added in equal masses and then we have a mixture and the relative density of the mixture will come out to be 3. Okay, so how do you find relative density in this case? Let's see, the formula is the same, the total mass divided by the total volume. Okay, so what will be the total mass? The total mass is going to be, and let's assume that mass M and mass M of both the liquids are mixed. Okay, so the total mass is going to be m plus m, which will be 2m. Now we have to write the total volume. What will be the volume of the first liquid? It is going to be m upon rho 1. And what is the volume of the second liquid? It is going to be m upon rho 2. Okay, so what do we have? We have 2m. And then we will have m into rho 1 plus rho 2. And rho 1 into rho 2 is going to go to the numerator. So m gets cancelled. And we have 2 rho 1 rho 2 upon rho 1 plus rho 2. And this comes out to be 3 as stated in the question. Okay. So from here, can I say that rho 1 into rho 2 is equal to 3 by 2 times rho 1 plus rho 2. And we have al act already calculated rho 1 plus rho 2 and which is 8. So this comes out to be 3 upon 2 multiplied by 8. And this is going to be 12. And let's just make a note of this as well. So basically what we have done, we have two variables which we have to find out. So simply we have found out two equations. So one equation is rho 1 plus rho 2 is equal to 8 and the other equation is rho 1 into rho 2 is equal to 12. Now these are two equations and we simply need to solve them. Okay, the first equation is rho 1 plus rho 2 is equal to 8. The second equation is rho 1 times rho 2 is equal to 12. Now I can substitute for any of them. So rho 2, I'm going to substitute it as 12 upon rho 1. Okay, so what do I get? I get rho 1. And for rho 2, I'm going to write 12 upon rho 1. And this is equal to 8. All right, now this you can understand is going to become a quadratic equation, which we can very easily solve. So we have to split 12 into 8. So we can do that by minus 6, 8, rho 1, minus 6, rho 1, 
minus 2 row 1 plus 12 is equal to 0. Then we are going to have row 1 into row 1 minus 6 minus 2 row 1 minus 6 and we are almost at the end and we have found out the factorization which means that row 1 can be either 2 or 6 which means one of them is going to be 2 and the other is going to be 6 okay now let's have a look at the options And when we look at the options, what will be the correct option? Option A is going to be my correct option. So the question is, in a YouTube experiment, a column AB of water is balanced by column CD of paraffin. The relative density of paraffin is all right. So we have this in one of the arms, we have water. In the other arm, we have an oil, a paraffin oil and the height above this line CD or line BD given to us is that it is H1 for paraffin and H2 for water. Now in a static liquid, we know that very well that in the same liquid, the pressure at the same level is going to be the same. Absolutely. What does that mean? It means that the pressure at B is going to be exactly same as the pressure at D. All right. Both these tubes or both these arms are exposed to the atmosphere. So atmospheric pressure is going to act. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to write what is the pressure at point B. Okay, so the pressure would be equal to P naught plus the pressure due to this column of water. What is that going to be? That is going to be rho of water into G. And what is the height? The height is H2. All right, now this should be equal to the pressure at D. If we calculate the pressure of T, what is that going to be? That is going to be P naught and the pressure due to this column CD. Okay, how much that is that going to be? That is going to be the density of paraffin into G and what is that height? That height is H1. All right. So in the same liquid, the pressure at the same level is going to be the same. That's the concept we have used and we have found out the pressure at point B and D. Okay, a lot of things will get cancelled out. So P naught gets cancelled, G gets cancelled and what do we have? We have rho P upon rho water is equal to H2 upon H1. Now what is relative density? Relative density is the density of the liquid divided by the density of water and that's exactly what we have found out and we got it to be H2 upon H1. Now let's have a look at the options. So naturally option A is going to be my right option. So the question is determine height H of oil in the YouTube as shown in the figure. Density of oil is 0 0.9 gram per centimeter cube. Density of liquid is 1.6 gram per centimeter cube and density of mercury is 13.6 gram per centimeter cube. So there are three liquids in question and they are in equilibrium in this manner. We have to find out the height H which is the height of the column of oil in one of the arms of the YouTube. All right. So the concept that we are going to use here is that inside the same liquid, the pressure at the same level is going to be the same. Okay. It means that the pressure at B has to be equal to the pressure at C and that what that's what we're going to use to solve this question very simply. Okay, so I'm going to write the pressure at B is going to be the pressure at C. So P naught is going to act on both the arms of the tube because it is exposed to the atmosphere. So now I'm going to write what is the pressure at point B. Let's start. So first of all, P naught will be there, the atmospheric pressure would be there. And then there will be pressure due to this column of oil. How much will that be? That is going to be the density of oil into G into height of the column. Perfect. Then we also see that there is a column of mercury as well. So we have to add pressure due to that as well. And that is going to be the density of mercury into G into height. What is this height? This height is going to be 20 minus H. Perfect. So we have written pressure at B. We can similarly write pressure at C. So that is going to be P naught plus the height or the pressure due to the liquid column. And that is going to be rho L G. And what is the height? The height is 
20 centimeter. Notice that I have not converted anything to SI unit because from the LHS and RHS, all the things will get cancelled and I'm going to get the answer in centimeter itself. So it was not really required in this particular question. Proceeding P0 goes away, G goes away and we have rho naught H or rho O H, the density of the oil into rho M into 20 minus rho M into H and this is equal to 20 into rho L. Okay, if I arrange the terms and I find what is H, H will come out to be 20 into rho M minus rho L divided by rho M minus rho O. All right, that is the final expression that is going to come. Now, all I have to do is I have to make the substitution. So let's do that. So this will come out to be 20 rho M, which is 13.6 minus rho L, which is 1.6 is going to give me 12 divided by rho M minus rho O. So rho M is 13.6 minus 0 0.9 is going to give me 12.7. And so my answer is going to be slightly less than 20. And if you calculate this, it is going to come out to be 18.9 centimeter. Now let's have a look at the options. And obviously option B is going to be my right option. So the question is, pipes are arranged as shown in the figure below. Row 1, row 2 and row 3 are the densities of the fluids in these pipes where row 3 is equal to 2 row 1 and row 1 is equal to row 2. Find the angle theta shown in the figure. All right, interesting question. So we know that the density of row 1 and density row 2 is the same and density row 3 is twice of row 1. Okay, and this is the setup. It is in equilibrium. We have to find out what is the angle theta. So what we have to consider here is the pressure is caused due to the vertical height only. Okay, so any variation in pressure is linked to the vertical height and the actual length of the column does not really matter. That's what we need to keep in mind. Okay, so first of all, it is exposed to the atmosphere. So a pressure P naught and the pressure P naught is going to act at the ends. Perfect. So first let's find the pressure at point A. Okay, so the pressure at point A is going to be this pressure, which is acting over here, minus the height of the column. Okay, and what is that height going to be? That height is going to be L sine theta. As we said that the pressure variation is only going to depend on the vertical height. Perfect. So can I say PA is equal to P naught minus rho 1 G into L sine theta. All right. So as we go down, the pressure increases. As we are going up, the pressure is going to decrease. Hence the minus sign over here. Perfect. So I have found out the pressure at A. Similarly, can I also find out what is the pressure at B? So can I say that the pressure at B is going to be P naught, which is the pressure at this point, plus the height of this column, okay? And that is going to be rho 2 into H into G. So I found out PB as well. Okay, now can we find a relationship between PA and PB? Can we say that PB is equal to PA, which is the pressure over here, plus the height of the column of the liquid, which has density rho 3. Obviously, I can say that. So PB will be equal to PA plus rho 3 into G into what is the height of the column? The height of the column again is L sine theta. Okay, now all I have to do is substitute it into this equation and find the answer. So what is PB? PB is P naught plus rho 2 H into G is equal to PA is P naught minus rho 1 G L sine theta plus rho 3 G L sine theta. Okay, so P naught goes away. Now rho 1 and rho 2 have the same density. Okay, rho 1 is equal to rho 2. And also rho 3 is twice of rho 1. So rho 3, I can write it as twice of rho 1. 
So row two, row one and row one from here is going to disappear and I will be left with h is equal to 2l sin theta minus l sin theta because g will also get cancelled from all the sides. All right. So finally, what would I be left with? I will be left with h is equal to l sin theta and hence sin theta will be equal to h by l and that is going to be my answer. Let's have a look at the options. So option B is going to be my correct option.